London. Mid-century. All change. For the House of Dombey. And the House of Dombey, Mrs. Dombey, will once again be not only in name, but in fact, Dombey and son. She looks up at him, pale, silent, Mrs. Dombey. Dombey and son! Yes, Mrs. Dombey, my dear. Surprise, fleeting, crosses the exhausted face. My dear, has he ever said such words to her before? He will be christened Paul, of course. She has no breath to sound anything at all. Pale lips move in a pale face as she cradles the infant in her arms. His father's name and his grandfather's. Oh, how I wish he was here today. Why, he might even have smiled. <laughs> the proud father. Dombey and son. <laughs> Lawrence, come, child, come and look at your brother. But don't touch. No, don't touch by any means. How is Mama? Mrs Dombey? I dare say she is fine. Papa, I think she is ill. And Mrs Dombey makes a supreme effort and opens her eyes and turns her face towards her daughter of eight years. Florence Dombey, little Floy, little thought of, of little account in the ledgers of... Dombey and son! <laughs> Mama! Mama! What's this? A very ill-advised and feverish business. Florence, leave Mrs Dombey alone. Paul might catch something from you. Mama, you won't go away. Please say you won't go away. And she smiles. The silent mother smiles and finds strength enough to cradle her daughter's face and say, No, she won't go away. And... Come away, Florence. The baby needs air. And here's the doctor come to see Mrs. Dombey. He is a specialist of the highest order, Mrs. Dombey. You will be in the very best of hands. Now, Mrs. Dombey, my dear, dear lady, if you'll allow me to ascertain a few matters of... <laughs> so as to say, sir, you might detach the child. Now, Florence, leave your mother be. Mama, may I stay? Please, may I... Florence, you may go. Come. You sent for me, sir. Did I? I don't recall it. Who are you? Nipper, sir. Susan. I'm the kitchen girl. Ah, well now. Nipper, Susan. How old are you? Sixteen, sir. Responsible girl, are you? I hope so, sir. Family? No, sir. Workhouse, sir. Splendid. Sir? Things are looking up, Nipper, Susan, for Dombey and son. Yes, sir. An heir has been born. A son who will... You, Nipper, Susan, will receive a rise in your wages. See the housekeeper. Your new duties will be to act as general maid to... to Miss Florence. Do you understand? Promotion, sir. I won't let you down, sir. Of course you won't. Now go and see the child. Introduce yourself. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir. I won't let you down, sir. Just let the doctor in, will you, Nipper, Susan? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, you can depend on me, sir. To do... oh. Dr Peps, I apologise for the... Person. No need, Dombey, no matter at all, so as to say. Persons, how shall I put it? Abound. Sherry, we import it. It is rather fine. Or should I say, fino. Fine will cover it, sir. Quite. <sighs> well, Doctor? Well, sir, do you find that your dear lady is at all stimulated by events? Stimulated? Exactly my word, sir. No. No. I see. <laughs> oh. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Remarkably fine. I will have them send you a cask. Too kind. Now, Dombey, here is the thing. Mm. Mm. Very <laughs> fino. <laughs> Grace? No, I confound myself. Similarity of cases. Uh, I was only last week at... Uh, no matter. Of course. The Duchess, uh, like Mrs Dombey... <laughs> Mm. Some more, Doctor. Why not? Mrs Dombey has sustained, as it were, a shock, did he? The system under great... Mm. From which, so as to say, it will need, if it is to recover... Do you get my meaning? Mm. In a nutshell, if she is to make it, did he? Make it, Dombey. 
She is not strong. Rest is vital and encouragement. The child, Doctor, what of my son? Has much of his mother, but had you, as it were, considered the question of nursing? I had not. Mrs Dombey... May not. Mrs Dombey may not nurse and recover. I see. These are not questions. Exactly so, sir. But the boy... Queen Charlotte's royal married females. So as to say, a wet nurse will be required. I want nothing but the best for my son. But only the most respectable. Her Grace or even the Duchess. We are talking, sir, of quality milk. Of course, of course. You will arrange a person. A person, exactly. Expediently, there is no time to waste. Her Grace... Even the Duchess. Uh, uh, nothing but the finest, sir. Uh, mm. Ah, oh, yes. Delicious. And our patient? Rest, beef tea, quiet. Not too much daylight. And now, well, sir, I am expected at oh, it, another place. Uh, good day to you, sir. Oh, God. Downstairs, business. Upstairs, Miss Susan Nipper investigates... This is my rocking horse. Miss Florence Dombey. Ain't it just? I never had a horse, not when I was a nipper. He's a handsome horse. Of course, I still am in a manner of speaking, ain't I? What? A nipper. Why? Because that's my name, isn't it? Susanna Nipper. <laughs> See, Miss Floyd, that's a bit of a joke. I was a nipper when I was a nipper, but I'm still a nipper now I'm all grown up. When I grow up, I want to be a teapot. It would be handy. And warm. Can I see my mamma? I dare say, but not now. She's ill, poor lady. Mustn't be bothered. I wouldn't be a bother. She needs rest, poor lady. That's how it is for mothers in this world. Don't you see your mamma, Susan? In my dreams? Is she? She's in my dreams. Why don't you stop that also rocking? It's making me dizzy. And show me um, something else. Are you really to be my maid? It's a promotion. I'm to be a permanent. Is that a good thing? In this world, Miss Floy, it's always better to be a permanent than just a temporary. Because a temporary might be turned off. Just like that. Whenever the fancy takes. I would never turn you off, Susan. I like you, even if you have got a very sharp nose. In this world, Miss, a very sharp nose is generally to be considered a very good thing. I've got a musical box. It plays Lily Bolero and Hearts of Oaks and Sally in our alley. Have you got any friends, Miss Floyd? Martha and Penelope and Custard. They're all my friends. Look, that's their house. We have tea parties. Have you got any real live friends, Miss Floyd? You could be my real live friend, Susan. Would you? Ah. You must be the... Uh, Polly Toodles, Mrs. Wet Nurse, sir. In this house, everything is business, and business is... How do you do, Mrs. Toodles? Pretty well, sir. You have children, Mrs. Toodles? I do, sir. Five. The oldest a fine lad, the youngest six weeks. Is that really a name, Toodles? Well, it's Mr. Toodles' name, sir. What I took when we wed. And before? Polly Bunwinkle, sir. Ma'am, I must make it clear here and now that if you become nurse to Master Paul Dombey, it will be in an exclusive capacity. Do I make myself understood? Yes, sir. I have a sister who will look after mine. And I insist that your family background be impeccable. Yes, sir. Toodles is a driver on the railway. Ah, a modern man, then. Well, no harm in the signs of the times, eh? And finally, I would wish you to assume a more, as it were, a less, shall we say, Richards. You will be called Mrs Polly Richards. Do you have him? Uh, yes, sir. I tell you, he is very precious to me. He is my son. Do not, Richards, do not fail me. Do not fail Dombey, my son. Well, I should say, sir, that son needs his tea now. So if you would be so good. Yes. Yeah, 
Yes, of course. And Polly Toodles, nay Bunwinkle, now Richards, sits beside the bed so the young mother can see as she gives her breast to the boy. And a smile passes over the mother's face. That's it. Oh, now don't you worry, my dear. Polly will see him through. I'll see us all through. And one day, you'll see your little boy running in your garden. <laughs> if you ask me, ma'am, if ever a house could use a noisy little boy running in and out of a garden, it was this one. So days pass. Florence and Susan Nipper become better acquainted. Come away from the window, Miss Floor. You'll catch a cold. I can see the locomotive, Susan. Come and look. Across all the houses, you can just see the firebox and the lights of the carriage. What'd I be wanting with a locomotive? What's a locomotive to me? Where would I ever go on a locomotive? It's like a dragon, you know. I've got a picture of a dragon in the story. Mama and I read it together. It's all about Sir Lancelot and... What would I want with a story about a dragon? I can't read. Besides, they ain't real. Locomotives are real. They run on steam. My papa has ships that run on steam. They go all over the world. Your papa has a great many things, Miss Floy. He's got everything. Nobody's got everything. He's got a little boy now. Do you think they'll let me see him? I'd like to see him. I'd like to have a brother. What good are brothers to anyone? Do you have a brother? How would I know? It's time he was in bed, Miss Floy. I like looking at the trains. They glow in the dark like... Like lighthouses. Mr Dombey, grey of suit, grey of face and eye, stands coffin-framed in the door. Oh, sir, miss was just going to bed, sir, and... Come uh... along, Florence. You had better come too, Nipper Susan. Papa, what is it? Come, child. Now. Swiftly, Dombey walks. There's no time to be lost in this business. Butler... Housekeeper maid stands silent along the walls, faces wavering palely in the candlelight. Come along now, Florence. The old house is silent, horribly, unnaturally silent. Grave, silent. Dead, silent. Doctor. So as to say, in the hands. We're all in his hands, and do you see? Who goes and who stays? Mama! Stay. Florence, do not disturb her. Say, say your farewells. Oh, Mama, you promised. You promised you would never, ever go away. Never, ever. Dombey's hands dig into his daughter's narrow shoulders, holding her. Let her go, sir. Let the girl go, Dombey. There's no more harm to be done. <laughs> Dr. Peps leans in and brushes the child's curls from the face of her mother but there's hardly enough breath to stir the least, the finest hair. Mrs. Dombey, the wife of the house of Dombey, clasps her dearest Florence and, clinging fast to this slight spar, drifts out upon that dark and unknown sea that rolls round all the world. done with my mamma. Lord bless you, Miss Floy. Nothing at all, that's what I've done. What a sad question. What have they done with my mamma? For Polly Toodles, alias Richards, life in the house of Dombey has dawned cold and grey. What have they done indeed? Come in, my love. Polly cannot fail to be aware of this small <coughs> presence in the shadows, peering down through the attic banisters. <coughs> A little exile in the house of Dombey. No need to be afraid of Polly. I'm not afraid of you. I fight dragons. Is that my brother? Well, of course it is. Here, look closer. <laughs> Ain't he just a little man? Oh, look how he comes on. I'm sure he knows just who you are, my dear. But what have they done with my mamma? You, you wear that pretty black dress in memory of your mamma. I can remember my mamma in any dress. But people put on black, you see, my little dove, to remember them that's gone. Gone where? 
Didn't your daddy tell you? My papa? Gone to heaven. Is it nice? Heaven? Oh, Lord. I dare say it is, in its time and place. But what if she gets tired of it and wants to come back? I want her to come back. But sometimes, my love, people can't come back. Like Sir Galahad and the Holy Grail. I dare say. It's very sad. It is, my dove, it is. Here, come closer and give me a hug. <laughs> There now, a hug is always good well, for little... Miss Florence, won't your pa be angry when it was said particular you mustn't disturb the wet nurse? Don't matter, Nan. I'm very fond of children. I'm very fond of winkles, but I don't follow I have them for tea every day, do I? Do it what, Susan? Never you mind, Miss Floy. Only you shouldn't be here. I've come to see Paul. Yeah, then, then why don't she ask her father when she sees him if she may sit with her brother? When she sees him? When might that be? I should like to see her see him, if you see what I mean. You don't? Not since? Not since, nor much before, from what I can see. Of course, as a permanent, what I see ain't the same as what you might see, Mrs Richards, being a temporary. But I want to see my little brother. He's nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the sound you don't hear round here a lot. This house not being set up for Mary Jakes and yeah, Jess. I had noticed that, even as a temporary. Please, may we come again, Susan, please? It's no bother for me, and it's good for the baby. It's medicine to wear and all, but the master says no annoyances. Couldn't you ask him? Me? Ask him? He don't know who I am. He plain forgot me once he told me to do my job. It ain't up to me. Not to me, no how, no way, not to Susan Nipper, it ain't. Now, come away, Miss Floyd, come away, you naughty girl. As she leaves, Miss Nipper exchanges a look with Mrs Richards, a look that says, There ain't no reason in this world why a permanent can't get along with a temporary if they comes to an agreement. And that evening, when Mrs Richards, ex-Toodles, takes Paul down to the great conservatory... You may walk with the child, Richards, but not too near the glass. I do not wish him to catch a chill. No, sir. Oh, Master Paul. Uh, um, sir? Yes? I believe there's nothing so good for children as having other children playing near. And I believe I mentioned that I wish to see as little of your family as possible. Yes, sir. He did, sir. Very well. Come on, Master Paul. We'll walk down here. <sighs> But if you really think some sort of society is... is good for the child... Come in. What are you scared of, girl? Yes, Papa. Nothing, Papa. Come here. You may shake my hand. You are a strange little thing, Florence. But I dare say you will be some good to the boy. Go to Richards. You see, Miss Florence, your papa says you may play with Master Paul. Nothing too rough now. I insist, nothing too oh, rough. Oh, papa, you know I will love him as much as Enough, I... enough. I am sure you will do very well. Will you stay, sir? It always does a body good to see young folk and babies. Why? Sir? No matter, I will be in my study. And Richards, young Paul will be christened. Arrangements will be made. Time passes slowly in the house of Dombey. In the great world, things roll on. Railways are built, locomotives speed across the rails to ports where ships of steam and sail arrive daily with goods for the house of Dombey. Money rolls in, time rolls on, and the day for Paul's christening dawns. Distant relations are called upon. Who stands as godfather to this child? Susan, why is it so cold? Shh, Miss Floyd, because it's a church and I ain't got a good fire in it. And dutiful voices drone out. I do, I do, I do. Susan, why haven't they got a good fire? Shh, Miss Floyd. Because I don't want to remind people of the flames what is to come for sinners. Why do sinners have a good fire and we have to freeze? And water is splashed. Shh. Be 
because good people are warmed by the cockles of their hearts. I name this child Paul Manet Dombey by the grace of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. But Susan, I thought cockles were cold. Amen. The day is a fine one. Shall we walk back to the house, Miss Florence? Would you like that? Yes. Could I push the perambulator? <laughs> You're a bit short, but I dare say you could help Susan and me. Can we, Susan? Can we? Mm. Mr Dombey has gone on with the guests, so I suppose we might take a walk in the sun. Oh, it's good to be out of that house. No, no, Susan. Uh, shall we go? And off they go, this way and that, through the busy city. The city busier and more crowded by the day as the future comes rushing pell-mell down road and close, avenue and crescent, as the very shape of the place changes. What is it, Mrs Richards? Why are they pulling the place to pieces? Oh, never fear, Susan. It's only the railroad coming through. See, they're building an embankment and a viaduct. Only think of it. Look, Miss Floyd. Look at all those men. Like ants, they are swarming. Swarming. They're navigators, Susan. They build the railroads. Toodles tells me all about their ways. Lots coming through. Lots coming through. Hold your backs, lovely ladies. We're going to take you along with us. Oh, aren't they big fellas, eh? Have you ever seen the like? Well, Miss Floyd, you was always looking at the locomotives. Now you see. Miss Floyd? Where is she? Oh, Floyd? Miss Lawrence? Oh, my Lord! She's gone! She's been took by the fellas! Go! Florence. Not Florence. taken, but cut off, lost and wandering, in a maze of tiny streets, twisting, turning, a labyrinth of brick, leaning walls and looming roofs, and windows blinded by dust. There's hardly a strip of clear sky above and below. Susan! Susan, where are you? Susan, please. Susan, where are you? Where are you? Ah! Oh, why do you run away from me? Hey, no, my I, little sweet. I, I didn't. There were men. I got lost. Men. Oh, easy to get lost, sweeting with men. But I'll show you the way. Come but, along. But it, it was that way. You and... Come along with me. I'll find Susan and all the others. Who are you? Are you a witch? You look like a witch. <laughs> We're all witches, ain't we, us girls? Oh, no, lovey. I'm good Mrs Brown. Good Mrs Brown? Come, quickly, sweetie, quickly, or they'll all be gone and you left alone. Hmm? Hurry, hurry. Through lane, through alley, through court on court, and at last, uh, a dark room, full, it seems to the child, full of clothes, old clothes, and there, there in the corner. I don't like it here. I want to go home. Don't we all? Now, my little dove, you must do as you are told. I or, want to go home. And how will you go home? With your pretty throat <laughs> cut from side to side. Here, Dolly, see good Mrs Brown's sharp scissors to cut your pretty head from off your pretty body to put out your pretty blue eyes. Please, I, I, I... Just be a good child and do as you are told. And why? Good Mrs Brown will send you on your way as right as rain. But do not, and it'll be rain as red as blood. Do you understand? Yes. Who are you? Be honest now. Florence Dombey. Florence Dombey. You know what? I need them clothes you're wearing. Them fine clothes. I'll get a bit of tin for them. Now, out of them. But, but I... Snip, snip. That pretty dress. A petticoat or two. The shoes. And the bonnet. Come on, beauty. And piece by piece they go into the clutches of good Mrs Brown. Dress and petticoat. Shoes and bonnet. Oh, and... oh, oh, oh such beautiful. 
Such gold, such cold, snip, snip. Ah! Oh, such hair I could get. Oh, oh, I swear to you, sweeting, if I had not a daughter of my own who once had hair like yours, golden hair she loved. She's gone abroad and lost who knows where. Now, put these on. They ain't swell, but they'll cover you and see you to somewhere safe. Rags, they are, but they serve to cover the child. And good Mrs Brown takes her by the shoulder and leads her round and about and round and about and... Say one word of good Mrs Brown and I shall come to you and cut out your pretty eyes and cut off your pretty hair and your pretty head wherever you may hide. Mm. Snip, snip. Now, go. And again the child is lost and wanders. But now, now she thinks... Don't be in fun. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you know Dombey and Son? The firm of Dombey and Son, sir. D Dombey... Dombey and Son? Why, yes, little miss. They told you right enough. This is Dombey and Son. Oh, sir. Though, what, that might be to such as you. Uh, I don't know. Will you help me, please? Well, I'll give anyone a helping hand. You don't need to serve me, miss. I'm also the messenger boy. So if you've got a message, I'm the one for you. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's just like Sir Lancelot saving the maid from the dragon. Uh, now, hold up there, Missy. If you don't mind me saying, something can't right here. The look of you don't somehow go with the, uh, the sound of you. So why don't you tell Walter what's away? I am. I was stole away and I'm lost. I'm Florence Dombey and I was stolen by... by... And they took my clothes and gave me these, and I was lost. And I asked my way to Dombey and Son, and people said to go this way and to go that way, and here I am, and now you've saved me, Walter, and you will be my best friend and knight errant forever. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that, Miss Florence. But I can at least see you safe back home. We hold my hand. Shall we go together? Oh, yes, we shall. Isn't it an adventure? You know, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's money? <laughs> money, Paul? What is money? Yes, Papa. What is money? Why? Money makes the world go round. Money drives the ships that deliver the cargoes to Dombey and Son. Money powers the locomotives that carry those goods across the country. Time, like an ever-rolling locomotive, drives on, like the business of Dombey and son. Dombey and son and daughter and everybody else in this story move forward. Things change, people come and go. Richards, the nursemaid, is long gone. Susan Nipper is pretty much the same, though older and sharper by nine years. Nine years that have turned Florence into a young woman. Nine years that have turned Dombey Senior into... Trade, you see, Paul. Trade brings us profit. A man who loves his son with all the little love he has. But what is money, Papa? And all the love he has is inextricably entwined with... The house of Dombey and son makes money. Guineas, shillings, halfpennies, farthings. You know what they are? Yes, of course I do, Papa. But what is money after all? What can it do? Oh, money, Paul, my dear. Money can do anything at all. Then why didn't it save my mamma? What? Florence was crying last night, and when I asked why... Your she... sister is a woman, Paul. She is often prey to emotions. It is the way of things. Can't be helped. But Mama did die. And money couldn't save her. And you have a lot of money, don't you, Papa? Dombey and Son have money, Paul. And you must never forget that whilst I am Dombey, you are... Son. Good. But money isn't good because it couldn't save Mama. 
and it can't make me strong and well either. Can it, Papa? Looking at the child's face in the firelight, Dombey sees, beyond the innocence, something strange, as if his son were a changeling, that the little human baby had been stolen away by the fairy folk, and something terribly old and terribly wise that only looked like a child had been put in its place. <clears throat> it is getting late, my boy. You should be getting ready for bed. And the little face that looks at him, both sad and sly. You are as strong as any boy I know, Paul. And you need your sleep, eh? Did you ring, Papa? Where is Wickham? Mrs Wickham being Richard's successor as nurse. I promised Paul I would see him to bed tonight, Papa. Come on, Floy. I want to hear how Gawain meets those giants. He does, doesn't he? Oh, you have to wait and see. Good night, Papa. Mm. Good night, Paul. Oh, Florence. Papa? Perhaps you will attend on me after breakfast tomorrow, before I go to the office. Cold dismissal. Perhaps a colder morning. Enter. Yes, Papa? <clears throat> I have decided... Yes, Papa? ...that Paul is to go away. <gasps> this house, it is not enough. There is something wanting here. Oh, Paul has me. He has his nurse, his tutors. Surely he has all he wants. He has you, Papa. But he does not have... Florence, he does not have fully his health. He plays? But not as a boy plays, Florence. Not as the heir to Dombey should play, Florence. He needs, I believe he needs, more to the point Dr Parker Peps believes... Papa? Sea air. Will be good for the boy, Brighton. An establishment well recommended, Mrs Pipchin's. There will be walks, sea bathing in the season, fresh air. Paul needs building. But Papa, will I be left in London? I see no need for you to be in Brighton. Won't Paul be lonely? I shall go down on Sundays to see him. And you, as for you, Florence. Oh! It's the plank for you, Marty. No avoiding it now. The household of Dombey and Son isn't the only thing that has changed over these nine years. Steady now. Steady skills. Uh, now, let her have it. All my lad, go on. Well, she, she's very small terror, Captain. Do you really think such a large plank? Wail on, my hearty. It's the small ones are the trickiest. <laughs> young Walter Gay, who was very young Walter last time we met, and rescuing Miss Florence Dombey from the clutches of good Mrs Brown. Then Walter was a messenger with Dombey and son, orphaned when father and mother went down with the ship whilst in the company's service. Now 19, Walter sails on. A clerk for the company, lodging with his guardian, Captain Cuttle, at the sign of the midshipman. Instruments of navigation, telescopes, charts and globes to be had. She'll be fast now, Walter. And we'd best be away to our supper. Oh, as you say, Captain. As you say. We've still a haddock left, I believe. I'll tell you, if it wasn't for what you bring in from Dumby, we'd be beached, that's for sure. Trade not good? Trade, not in the offing. It is the Sargasso Sea of Sails, me boy, we're becalmed. And that's a fact, and I don't like it. Well, we can't change, we have to endure, Captain. It's a fine sentiment, Waller. But sentiment won't float a ship. No. You need water. Oh, and, and so does smoked head of car. And sailors need rum. Oh, no, no, not for me, Captain. Prepare to repel Waters, Waller. He might be a customer. At this time? You better see, Captain. He, he's not going away. Oh. Captain Cuttle. Aye. Brogley. I am broggly to you, sir. Three hundred guineas. You have the better of me, sir. I have a writ, sir. Captain? 
Oh. Well, well, uh, I require payment, sir. When? Thursday week. Oh? Shop goes. Huh? Goes? Bankrupt. And you. Me? Debtor's jail. Captain. Good night. Scuppered. On a lee shore without the wind, Waller. Three hundred guineas. Not a word, Marty. My indentures, my clothing. You borrowed money to pay them all. I'll give me word, Waller, to your father that I'd look after you come Typhoon and Hurricane. All of it? Mortgaged? Aye. Uh, I'm afraid so, my lad. I'd hoped you'd be set up proper before we went down, but... Well, you're a man now, a good man. And you'll get by. But what about you, Captain? I kept my word to a friend. There's no more to be said. I may just sling my hook and set sail for distant shores before that scrub comes back with his writ. No, I will not. We simply can't. There must be something we can do. Better get you back to Mrs Pipchins. For that is where they are, Paul and his sister and his nurse, bracing Brighton. And if Mrs Pipchin isn't exactly a good fairy, she's not quite a bad one either. Goodness, Miss Florence, you shouldn't be taking the boy out in such weather. Oh, I love the weather, Mrs P. It does, it's true. Well, sit down now, Paul, by the fire here, and we shall have toast and butter, and you shall help me toast it. And fly help, too. Oh, I'm a terrible toaster, Paul. <laughs> you do it. But don't get burnt. Now, hold the fork over the flames, not in them. Let it brown slowly, like the condemned in hell, I dare say. <laughs> Does the devil eat toast, Mrs P? How the devil should I know? <laughs> it would be as easy as knowing what goes on in that head of yours, Master Paul. Oh, that's easy. I'm thinking how old you must be. Uh, uh, uh. How old are you, Mrs P? Remember the story of the little boy who was gored to death by the mad bull for asking too many questions? <laughs> if the bull was mad, how did he know the boy was asking questions? I don't believe that story. You don't? I don't. Oh, mind the toast! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On Sundays, Mrs Pipchin's drawing room is by no means so cheerful, since Mr Dombey is there checking the progress of sun and air. Looked at the poor boys and thought, thought that they should have learned. Learn the lessons. Forgive an old sort, madam. <laughs> I would not have intruded, only, um... But this Sunday, they have visitors. Mr Gay, what is your business? Is it the business of Dombey and Son? If not, why are you here? Uh, uh we have a problem <clears throat> and a worry, sir. Well, my father worked his whole life long for Dombey. I've worked for them too, and, and this good man... He too worked for the company. On the China trade, sir, before I lost my hand and <laughs> gained a hook. We are Dombey men all, sir. Well? The captain here owes a bill. 300 guineas. Money he spent on me on honouring my father's debts. His business is not good, he cannot pay. He'll be sold up if, if the money... What do you expect me to do, Mr Gay? If you could, alone, I would... We would be so grateful. It would save a good man. It would be a good thing. I don't really think, sir, that alone... Papa, what is money for? Hmm? What is it for? Is it bad or good, Papa? Paul, look at me. The child turns those old young eyes fully onto his father. If you had money now, as much as 300 guineas, what would you do with it? 
I would give it to the whiskery man with the hook. Well, when you are older, you will share my money. We will use it together. Dombey and son. Dombey and son. And would you like to begin to be Dombey and son now and lend this gentleman the money he requires? If you please. And I know Floyd would like it too. <laughs> Girls have nothing to do with Dombey and son. Would you like it? Yes, I would. <clears throat> Gay, come here. Take this note to Mr. Carker at the office on Monday. He will arrange matters. Why, <laughs> hearts of oak ain't in it, sir. You will consider this is done for you by Master Paul. Uh, then God bless you, young sir. You can stand on my foredeck whenever it pleases you. And can we sail to the end of the world? Um, Thank you, that will be all. Thank you, Master Paul. Wait, wait, Walter, do you have no word for me? We were companions once, you, um, saved me from a witch. <laughs> well, I remember it well, Miss Florence, and I'm glad to see Florence. you. Florence. Sorry, Papa. If you have finished your business here, then good day, gentlemen. The door shuts with the finality of a bank vault. But Mr. Dombey has seen how his daughter's face lit up at the sight of this old friend, Walter Gay. The majesty of the sea, the mighty ocean, the, 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 the channel, the moat that surrounds, protects, feeds and delights the soul. Attend to me, you future leaders of this pleasant land. Attend and... <laughs> Don't be, my little friends. What do we see upon the briny waves? Ships, Dr. Blimber. I see ships. Toots, sir. Uh, toots, enlightened young Dombey. What do we see upon the um, sea? Uh, a mighty web of uh, trade and uh, communication, <laughs> sir, that uh, stretches. Uh, stretches. Stretches. Iguano, oh. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen. Take notes, no tub, and Iguano is by no means, no means at all to be frowned upon. How comes Paul Dombey to be in a crocodile of boys in Brighton with a gentleman called Blimber, Dr. Blimber, and a young fellow called Toots? Just Toots. Gentlemen. We shall turn our faces towards that bastion of learning, that monument to rectitude. In short, we shall go back to the academy. Ah, Blimber, a fount of knowledge, a mountain of a man who has assured Mr Dombey. Boys are our business here and education. My son is nine years old and there is no doubt he is in his studies behind many children of his age. Or his youth. Now there is an eminence waiting for him to mount. There must be nothing of chance in the education of the heir to Dombey and son. Quite. His tutors are well-meaning. His health is not of... At Dr Blimber's Academy, health, sir, is always in our minds. For a healthy mind requires a healthy body. And where better than Brighton, bright jewel of the South, to achieve both? Quite. Will you bring the little chap in, sir? We will see. Paul, come in, please. Yes, Papa. May Floyd come too? It has nothing to do with Florence. But Papa. Very well. Thank you, Papa. How do you do, my little friend? Very well, thank you, sir. Ah, now, shall we make a man of him? Shall we a man of him make? Oh, it's well to be a boy, sir. You must attend to Dr Blimber, Paul. Mm, you are a very little fellow for your age. Was he, sir, always this, uh, little? My brother hasn't been well, sir. Not for a long time. Well, well, Miss Dombey, we shall do as we shall do, and soon my little friend will be well. The sea air does seem to suit him. And I hope we shall suit him, too. Shall we tailor his education towards... I say nothing wanting except perhaps a mentor, some older boy. I have the very fellow in mind, sir, a head boy, Toots. Toots? Toots! This is Toots. Sir, 
A little friend, Toots, young Paul Dombey. You will be his imprimatur, will you not? Sir. You will look after him with care, Mr. Toots. My brother is... Quite really... well enough. I, 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 I... Young Toots is, upon the spot, thunderstruck by a pair of blue eyes, the bluest blue. Miss Dombey? Mr. Toots? I... I, I, I... May we get along? Then, Toots, why not show our little friend to his room? You will show. Oh, sir, with Miss Dombey's brother. What has Miss Dombey to do with it? Oh, why, nothing, sir. Nothing at all. I think, then, I have now given all the trouble I need and will take my leave. Papa? Yes, Paul? Will Florence be going, too? Do you wish Florence to stay? Yes, Papa. Then Florence will continue to lodge with Mrs Pipchin. You may see her on the weekends. And... And try... Try to learn a great deal here. And be a very clever man, won't you? I shall try, Papa. And you'll soon be grown up. Yes, Papa. Grown up. Now, take my hand, my dear. There were those who said that so long had Toots attended Dr. Blimber's that every useful scrap of knowledge had been sucked from his brain. It may have been true, but Toots is a good fellow and takes to young Paul Dombey, indeed takes him out every day in that bracing air, with Diogenes, Dr. Blimber's dog. You are a small chap, you know. Yes, sir. I am very small. I'm told. Oh, no need to call me sir, old chap. Toots will do. Toodle do. That was a bit of a joke, Dombey. You may laugh. <laughs> or not, as you please. You're a very serious chap, you know. Florence says I am. Ah, uh, Florence. Miss Dombey. She says I actually tried to play more, but. But? I feel. I feel so very tired. Who's your tailor then? My sister's a dressmaker. She makes my clothes. Oh, good Lord! Burgess and Co are mine. Fashionable, but devilish expensive. I suppose your father's just regularly rich, is he? He's Dombey and Son. Ah, I see. Dombey? And Son. You. Me. So, Dombey. I know! What do you think, eh, Dombey? About a great many things. Such as? To wit? If you had to die... Well, I say, old fellow. <laughs> don't you think you'd rather die on a moonlit night when the sky was quite clear and the wind was blowing as it did last night? Blowing, you say? Not blowing, exactly, but sounding like the sea sounds in shells. I watched last night from our window. There was a boat over there in the light of the moon. A boat with a sail. Smugglers? The sail was like an arm, all silver, and it went away. And what do you think it did as it moved with the waves? The pitch? It seemed to beckon. Beckon. There she is! Beckoning. My sister Florence. See? She's walking there along the beach. Oh, oh the devil! Oh, Floy's an angel. She's my good angel. The dinner bell. Come along, old chap. We have to go. We can't wait for Miss Dombey. But we'll be late and the doctor don't like that one bit. He likes his dog to be fed on time. Diogenes! <coughs> come, boy, come! <coughs> it is remarkable in those gorgeous and profuse entertainments of which we read in the Dombey. authors of the Johnson. Silver Age. Johnson? Old chap. Take right, Towser. Mm. Fancy some beef, old fella? No, thank you, Towser. Don't want to pass up good beef, old fella. So don't trouser it, Towser. Pass it over. <laughs> <laughs> How's your health, Dombey? Not that strong, I'm afraid. You need more beef, my boy. <laughs> Roast beef for all. Hmm? What's that? Mm. I say, he's very red. <laughs> Are you listening, boys? I do not expect to be interrupted at the table. Stop him with the back towel there. Quiet there. He's very, very red now. I better let it come, Johnson. What would your ma think if you died of choking? <coughs> roast beef of old England. I was talking of Imperial Rome, Johnson, not England or roast beef. One odes Horace, number 17, by rote by breakfast. Mr Dombey, in his judgment that Paul was not as far forward as boys of his age was not wrong, 
far from it. Paul's tutors, estimable men in many ways, had not, on the whole, been very effective. A thousand years of wisdom awaits you, Johnson, and yet you groan. Why is this? Not more beef in the windpipe, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I delight in geometry. Onward, gentlemen, onwards, into the land of knowledge. Pencils in hands. Tires are, I said hands, not noses. Paul is often brought down at the first hurdle, but being industrious and, above all, willing. My little friend, you appear perplexed. The angle of the hypotenuse is equal to... Does it ring a bell? A distant bell? No? I'm very afraid not, Doctor. Then, my little friend, we must help you to catch up. The heavy duty of learning, learning, learning begins to lay heavier yet on Paul Dombey by the day, by the week, by the month. Even his weekends, his sacred holidays away from Blimber's days spent with Florence. Oh, Flora, it does go on so. Why, what is it, Paul? Euclid. I try. I really do try. But somehow... It all starts to swim in front of my eyes. Let me see. Interior angles on the same side equal two right angles. I don't... I can't... Look, move over. I'll draw it for you. Here. It all begins to come into focus for Paul. If we put letters here and here... But what he doesn't know is that these past weeks, Florence has bought the same books he's been struggling with and read them, and learned them, and now... Do you see? It all seems really obvious. You are a wonder. I don't know what I'd do if you weren't here. Only it sort of seems so unfair. Don't you ever want to be back in London? There's nothing I miss, nothing I want in London at all. Well, except... Except? There's this... Just... <gasps> uh... It's the one I lend money to, isn't it? What was his name? Mr. Gar. Walter Mr. Gay. His name is Walter Gay. Once upon a time, he rescued me from a wicked witch and. Now he's your bow. <laughs> he is not. He is. Fly's got a bow. Fly's got a bow. Stop it. Stop it, Fly's you horrid boy. Fly's got a bow. <laughs> Walter Gay. Walter Gay. The offices of Dombey and Son. Hmm. Exactly. Dombey addressing... How exactly, sir? Carker. Mister. If there's any other name, it is not known in the office. We lent him his guardian, Captain Cuttle. An amount on your authority. Say, 40 years old. Dark. Dark as old death with... Master Paul's authority. Quite. Teeth. Glistening white regular, smiling teeth that are, in their way... All gone through, settled. Quite distressing. All quite satisfactory, sir. Guarantees in place. We have a mortgage on the property that precedes all others. I don't know what Dombey and Son would do without you, Mr Carker. Uh, there is no better manager in the city. Dombey might as well be saying there is no better wolf in the city, for that is what Mr Carker, general manager, is in the firm of Dombey and Son. A wolf, and yet, like that animal, cruel, implacable, untiring in pursuing and pulling down its prey, there is also something attractive, almost hypnotic, drawing you in and in, and... You have a committee on Monday at three. I've prepared an aid memoir. You may care to study it, sir? Thank you. I will take it with me. The members... ...are the same non-entities as before. You'll get exactly what you want out of them. Is there anyone in the city you do respect, Carker? Well, not many. <laughs> I wouldn't answer for more than... one. Well, then, I believe that is all for now. I am for Brighton, going down to see Master Paul. Ah, then you will perhaps be so good as to pass on my best respects? Certainly. I will bid you good night and a pleasant journey, sir. Mr. Carker. Yes. The young man we were talking of. Walter Gay. He clerks in the imports office, I believe. 
I... I'm not sure that I really care for him. Do something about it, will you? And as he sets off for Brighton... Porter! Yeah. Mr. Dombey and Dark Mr. Carker set in train a series of events which will have... It's the thing about time. The thing about time, Tits. Hmm. Is that sometimes it seems to go faster and faster... And then, I don't know why, but I begin to feel dizzy, like the whole world was racing past, racing away from me. I well, shouldn't that bother you, Dombey, old chap. I should just sit down and leave it to Toops. Once the face is off, you can see what makes it work. All those wheels and gears and cogs, big and small. But not beyond the wit of Toots. Time and toots of an understanding. Now, look here. Time may have paused for the big old clock on the landing at Dr. Blimber's Academy in Brighton, but elsewhere it has moved on. Six months have passed. Paul has mastered Euclid and has become something of a favourite at the Academy. But what he hasn't become is well, or even much better. He gets paler thinner, older by the moment, as if he is indeed living by a faster clock. There. It only needed a turn or two and the application of toots. You can count on toots. Well, I know it ain't exactly three, more like eleven, but... Dombey, old chap. Dombey? Oh, my lord, Dombey! Well, now, my little friend, how do we find you today? Better, I think, sir. I hope so, too. The doctor appears pleased with you, my boy. Pleased? He says, that young fellow don't complain, do he? I try not to, sir. It is a right manly thing to do, Paul. I wouldn't want Florence to worry about me, doctor. I wonder if you might not tell her I've been poorly. Hmm. Now... It is only two days before the summer party to mark the beginning of the long vacation, when you will be off home anyhow. I take it your sister will travel back to London with you? Yes, sir. Then I tell you what, my little friend. It shall remain a secret within the portal of Castle Blimber until the day you go home. Is that fair? Very fair, sir. Thank you. And perhaps if you could help me to the window. I do like to look out at the sea. I think it makes me stronger. Nothing like sea air, my boy, to build a fellow. And talking of which, some of our young fellows will no doubt pop in to see you, eh? If you feel up to it. Oh, very much, sir. Very much. Brought you a slice or two of beef, Dombey, before that raptor Johnson gets his teeth on it. Nothing like beef for building a chap up. That's very good of you, Tarzan. Sorry, old chap. Mustache. I wouldn't dodge in his missus's walks with you, old chap. So get better soon, I say. Beef, you say? If you'd like it, Johnson. I don't seem to have much of an appetite for anything these days. Oh, I never seem to have anything but. Pass it over, Dombey. Johnson's your man for beef. Are you handy, Dombey? I think I am, Tits. Pretty much so. Yeah, brushed and ready to dance. Well, not quite ready for dancing, old chap. But more than ready to go downstairs and see everyone. Is Floy there yet? Oh, she is, old chap. And is she popular with the fellows? I'll tell you what, here, have an arm and we'll set off. She's a bit popular with Toots too, eh? So uh, if you was to tell her, she can count on Toots. I think she knows that already, Toots. <laughs> oh, my little friend. I <laughs> hopped down the stairs like mountain goes, didn't we, Dombey? We did, it. And Floyd, there you are. And Diogenes. Here I am. Paul. But the doctor tells me you've been ill, Paul. That was nothing really. It was very little, wasn't it, Tits? Very little, Miss Dombey. 
I do worry about you, Paul. Sometimes, dear, I wish you didn't. Not so much. Miss Dombey, a waltz? Will you dance? With me, Miss Dombey. I'm a terrific waltzer. He ate a patch on me, Miss Florence. Beef is to waltzing. As is the head boy to his juniors. Miss Dombey. Go on, Floyd. Dance for toots. Dance for me. For I love to watch. Dance for them all. And so, watched by Paul's beady young old eyes, Florence dances with Mr Toots, with Towser and Johnson. She even dances with... Miss Dombey, may an old gentleman beg the pleasure? And then she dances with Toots once more. The very last waltz of all for Paul, who sits and drinks in every swirl and turn, every note, every smile, every bright eye. And as Florence dances, she thinks of... I've had some news, Uncle. News, you say? I do. News. Walter Gay and his guardian, Captain Cuttle, are, if not all at sea, at least out on the river. Uh, and, and, and would this be in the way of being good news or tell a way about? On the old, Captain. Good. <laughs> Will you take a little rum? Well, I'll take a little <laughs> advice, if I may, Captain. Oh, uh, in loco parentis, like. <laughs> I've, I've been offered a place by a firm. Uh, I thought you had a place, Paul. Well, another place. Oh. Uh, whereabouts is this other place? Barbados. Oh, the Indies. Uh, <laughs> oh, but no easy passages there, matey. Mr Carker, the manager, offered it to me himself. Spoke very highly of my father. Said it was time for me to carry on in his footsteps. To take my place at the forefront of Dombey and Son's commercial empire. Uh, Carker. I don't know that I like the man Waller. It seems to me that when he set up that loan, why, his terms were very tight indeed. He did lend the money and that was... It saved the shop, it did indeed. Well, should I go? Should I take this chance? Well, if you don't... Then there's no future for me at Dombey and Son. A man must catch the tide when it turns. <laughs> Only it would mean leaving England. I'm leaving you, Captain, for years, probably. Five years at least, he said. That's what sailors do, Waller. They leave it all behind. But eh, maybe it's not me or the shop or smoky old London town that you're so shy of leaving at all. <laughs> Whatever do you what? mean, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> not what, mate, so much as who turned that way. <laughs> carefully now, don't bump him. Bring him carefully. Carefully now. Oh, don't worry so fly. I am all right. It's too much for you, the journey home. We should have taken more time. Oh, time for it goes faster and slower, and sometimes Toots can stop it altogether. Shh, hush now, sweetheart. Don't talk, you must rest. Floyd, come closer. What is it? Was that Papa in the hall when they brought me from the coach? Yes, dear. He didn't cry and go into his room when he saw me coming in. No. No, Paul, he didn't. I'm very glad he didn't cry. I thought he did. Don't tell them that I asked. Boy. Floy, what is that? Where, dearest? There, at the bottom of the bed. There's nothing there except Papa. My own little man. Don't you know me? It's dark, Papa. It's so very dark. Come closer, will you? Of course, my dear. Here. Here I am. I'm close by, Paul. Don't be so sorry, Papa. I'm all right. I'm getting better. You'll see. Of course you are. Roy, lift me so I can watch you. I'm not too heavy. 
No dear, not too heavy. Why? Did I ever see Mama? No, darling. Why? I remember a face, a kind face, looking, looking down. It was either me. I'd never forget you. Or your old nurse, Polly. Show me that old nurse, Floyd. Show me. She's not here, Paul. But I shall try to find her, bring her here. Yes, yes, here, bring her. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for railway cutting. Do you know where I'm Sorry, I'm... ma'am, I don't. Excuse me, do you know Mr. where Dombey? I'm... Miss Dombey! Miss Dombey! Mr. Gay! Uh, you lost, again. If you recall, last time we ate, you know... No, I, I'm trying to find... I have to find someone. You upset. You destroy whatever's bad... Uh, I mean, about your brother, I, I do hope for his... It's for him. I'm, I'm looking for his old nurse, you see, Polly Richards. He wants to see her and... You see, I fear that... I'm so sorry. No, well, I'm sorry, Miss Dombey, for all your grief for... Look, <laughs> please let me find this Mrs Richards and bring her to you. Let me do you this service. Oh, if you would. Uh, here's the address. I know the street. It's by the railway viaduct. Right, I'll, be, I'll be quick. Thank you, thank you, Walter. Well, I won't let you down. Walter Gay has been haunting the Dombey house ever since he got news of his promotion, hoping for a sight, for a word. But this is worse than nothing, to see her in such pain. He is sleeping. No, no, Papa. I was waiting, that's all. I was waiting for Floyd. I'm waiting for... It's all right. I'm here, darling. I'm here. Papa. Yes, my dear. Will you open the window? I like to hear the sea. Yes. Yes, of course, Paul. Whatever you want. my hand. <laughs> Papa, where are you? I can't see you. Papa? Here I am, my dear. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Hold my Light ripples across the room like the motion of waves. And Paul Dombey, the son of the house of Dombey, clinging fast to the hands of his sister and his father, drifts out upon that dark and unknown sea that rolls round all the world. And Dombey and son is Dombey and daughter, after all. <laughs>